in the quiet silence, there is an eternal conversation between creator and creation. But we can hardly hear. It's the violence of sound, the breakneck speed of things. Has noise become our only defense? But we are drawn by a whisper that we might hear and retune the senses as he waits. Waits. Waits for our response. What's up guys, it's Pastor RJ here, and I'm really excited to wrap up the Exalted Student Experience with an amazing message as we have day five talking about isolation versus community. See, you were created on purpose for a purpose, and part of that purpose was to have community, to have relationship with God and other people. But so many people feel alone. It's actually one of the greatest fears that people have is not to be liked or to be alone, to have no friends, that is terrifying to so many people. And there's a lot of people that feel that way right now because they've either pushed a lot of people away or they're not willing to step out. They're not willing to do something and invite people into their lives and to make new friends. They want friends to come to them, but it never works that way. It never works that way because we make friends because we go to other people and God brings people in our lives. And that's what we're looking at today, how Jesus is our greatest friend and how Jesus promises us companionship. Yes, Jesus promises us companionship. So when everyone walks out on you, when you feel like you're all alone, you are not alone. God is with you. Jesus is with you. He is all present. He never leaves us nor forsakes us as a believer. That is such a comforting thing when you're struggling and you feel like you're all by yourself. Jesus felt like he was all by himself too when his disciples deserted him and people were mocking him and he went to the garden to pray and everyone started to deny him as Lord and Savior and that they knew him and he got taken away and was arrested and eventually crucified. But he also prayed to the Father and he knew the Father was with him. And so he trusted God. He trusted his heavenly Father and he gave that model to us to follow as well. To let our hearts not be troubled and know that his presence is with us and wherever two or three are gathered, he is in the midst. And so we need to gather together in community and Christianity cannot be fulfilled without the people of God. And so Jesus promises companionship in your life, but people promise discipleship. See, Jesus promises companionship, but people promise discipleship. It tells us over and over and over again in the Bible that, you know, we're supposed to iron sharpen iron as believers. We're supposed to be there for one another and make each other stronger and better. That we're supposed to build each other up. We're supposed to teach each other the Word of God, admonish and encourage one another in the Word of God. We're supposed to sing together and pray together and serve together and give together. You can't do those things without people. And so God's mission and God's plan for your life includes other people. And he wants you to have community. And one of the greatest places you can find community is at church. And so if you're a teenager looking for church, we would love to invite you to be a part of our church here at Magnolia. Magnolia Church here in Riverside has a place for teenagers to be real, a place for teenagers to find purpose, a place for teenagers to be authentic, to become authentic followers of Jesus Christ. And we definitely want to invite you to be a part of that. You can go to our website, maganline.com students, to learn more about that. And so as we do every night, we get ready for our time in God's Word through worship. And we're going to have this time of worship right now with our friends from the Pondo Worship Movement who have been leading us all week at the Virtual Exalted student experience. And they're singing this really great song called The Goodness of God. God is so good. And we need to worship Him for all He's done at Exalted and all He's doing in our lives. 
and how he's going to bring us victory one day when Jesus returns. And so enjoy this time of worship from our friends in the Pondo Worship Movement. Let's pray. God, we thank you for our time, and we ask that you would be with us as we enter this time of worship. We give you the exalted student experience, Jesus. This is your event. We pray that you would use it and that you would reach others and give them hope, knowing that there is a God in heaven that loves them, who is real, who is truth, and wants to change their lives. And so we just pray you bless this time of worship as we invite your presence into our lives and that you would minister to our hearts because we got a lot going on. We have so many things that we're dealing with and we just need to be still and know that you are God. So help us to do that right now during the song. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercies never fail me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up To when I lay my head down I will sing of the goodness of God Cause all my you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice have led me through the fire in darkest nights you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God and all my the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered. the goodness of God I will see of the goodness of God I will see of the goodness of God yo what's up exalted squad 
yo, I want to encourage you guys to continue living a life that's loud and exalting the name of Jesus. Come on. Ain't nothing better. Hey, I miss y'all. Keep living that life. Keep going forward. Keep going strong. And I know there's going to be another conference soon. Don't worry. It's going to happen. And even if I ain't there to rock the mic, I'll just come and say what's up to everybody. Let's go. Stay encouraged. Stay faithful to the Lord and keep marching forward for Jesus. Amen. God is so good. He is good all the time. Thank you, Pondo Worship Movement, for sharing that with us and for leading us so faithfully all week long at the Virtual Exalted Student Experience. We are so thankful to call you our friends and to have community with us. You make us better. You point us to Jesus. We're so grateful you share your gifts with the church. Thank you for all you've done this week. Now as we transition to our message, my friend Jeff Smith from Faith Life Center here in Southern California is going to be sharing the gospel and talking about isolation versus community and how important it is for you to surround yourself with the right people. And one of the greatest places you can find that is in your youth group at church. People who are praying for you, supporting you, encouraging you, and teaching you the truth that will set you free. Welcome, Jeff Smith. What's up, Exalted family? I'm so pumped and geek to be a part of what Pastor RJ is putting together. Just this time last year, I was bringing my students here. My students had the time of their lives, and I was so excited to be a part of it again this year. But unfortunately, as you guys know, we happen to have a pandemic on our hands. But before we even get started with it, I want to give a shout out to Pastor RJ for this very reason. He could have stopped. He said, you know what? I'm going to just scrap this year and we'll just start back up when, when they say we can start preaching again. But no, he said, I'm going to still find a way to serve these students and for God to be exalted through it all, for his spirit to rain down on these students. And so for Pastor RJ, from my heart to yours, I appreciate your life because you could have just simply stopped running. But you said, no, we're going to figure out and we're going to make a way. And so because of that, I'm so excited for the blessings that God has for you and to just watch students' lives be transformed simply because of your obedience in all of this. And so you guys, let's give a round of applause for our boy, our brother, your pastor, Pastor RJ. Whoa, whoa. What's up, man? So I know you guys are kind of like, who is this crazy guy on my screen right now? Well, just a little bit about me. My name is Pastor Jeff. I'm a youth young adults pastor here at Faith Life Center in Eastville, California. Um, I'm having the time of my life and just loving on students, loving on young adults and just our, our congregation and having community. And one of the things that I want you guys just to know about me is I've been married this December, will be 10 years. Come on, somebody. Uh, just a fun fact about me and my wife. We have known each other since my seventh grade, her eighth grade year. So, fellas, you know that cute girl that's like in front of you in class? Go ahead and shoot your shot. Just play that. Just leave her alone. It's okay. I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> so, something just to get you guys to know a little bit more about me. I have, uh, I have two amazing kids. Uh, my daughter, Sarai, she is seven years old. She'll be eight in September. My son, Uriah, he is five years old. And one of the things about the isolation, the thing about being in this quarantine, I've gotten to learn my family so much. I've gotten to study my wife more. I've gotten to study my kids more. And what, what really makes them angry, frustrated, sad, but most importantly, the things that make them happy, the things that get them excited, the thing like watching their gift flourish, watching my daughter. She's so artsy. She loves family time. My son, he loves to be a part of just community. He wants me to play with him all the time. He's like, Dad, let's do this together. Let's do that together. My wife's spending quality time with her. These are the things that I'm loving the most about it. But can I be honest? There's been some things, or maybe one thing in particular, that have really just been like, ah, taking my heart away. It has been this. Being in the schools with you guys. I know, I get it. Like, you're like, why? Being in school? I don't like being in school. This is my thing. I love going to your guys' schools because I get to see how you guys function. I love watching you guys when you guys are doing your TikTok dances, when you guys are getting together and you guys are just having a good time. 
watching your guys' small communities come together. That's such an amazing thing to me. I love watching when you guys get together, you're like, ah, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, I love it. I love it because it gets, like, I know, don't let the swag fool you. I know I look young, but it brings more youthfulness to me. And I love just being around you guys. It's like a breath of fresh air to me. To watch, and it, what makes it even greater is when I watch you guys worship Jesus together. Like when I go to the Jesus clubs and I'm watching people lead worship in their in their schools and saying like, hey, we're gonna love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength in public, in front of people who are non-believers. That is what brings me air. And when they said, hey, no more school, I was like, no. Why? Because I, I love being around students. I love being around just people. I'm a community person. That's just how my mind and my spirit works. That, that's what fills me up. My wife, she loves being around students, but she's just kind of like, uh, I'm more like, she's strategic with all of the students that she loves to like talk to and, and hang out with, right? And so like, I know some of you guys, some of my introverts are like, mm -mm. like I'm cool with being by myself. I get it, but can I give a little pushback to that? Have you ever been in school and when you were in school, it was like your first day in class, first day of school. And you have that one boring class that you're not looking forward to. And when you're sitting there looking in the class, your best friend walks into the door and you're like, you're in this class. You're in this class. We're in this class. Yes. Why? Because now the, the class is no longer boring because you can do life with somebody, right? Or how about this? How about Thanksgiving time comes around? And when you're not Thanksgiving, everybody's either older than you or everybody's younger than you. And you're fit, but your one cousin that is your age comes into the room with you. You get hyped, right? Why? You're so excited because now you have the person that you can do life with. You guys can create new memories. You guys can go outside and talk and share secrets. Why? Because you have your community. It's something about being in isolation that gets kind of tiring and even draining. So for some of you that this time you've been seeking God more now than ever before, come on, let's go. Keep grinding, keep going, keep seeking God's face. But for those of you that have been struggling through this process, maybe you've been having more anxiety than ever before. Maybe you've been having more depression more now than ever before. Or maybe you've just been like, Ah, like it just it hurts during this time. We're going to be praying that God's rest and his peace comes upon you. We're going to be praying that during this time, that while, we're, while you're in isolation, that you seek help, that you seek friendships, that you may not be able to see them physically, but you guys may FaceTime. You guys may do Zoom calls together. We're going to be praying that God gives you some strategic plans to help fill your heart with him more. So I want to just jump right in with this one quote. It's a quote from one of my favorite people on the planet Earth. Um, it, his, his name is Larry Acosta. Pastor RJ knows him very well. He has this saying, it's you suffer in isolation, but you heal in community. I'm going to say it one more time. You suffer in isolation, but you heal in community. I love that saying because that it's such a true statement because in isolation, you can suffer. Why? Because in that time of isolation, if you've already dealt with depression, your depression gets higher. If you've already dealt with anxiety, for whatever reason, your anxiety goes to a whole other level because it's so hard to do life by yourself. You, you need people to help rejuvenate you. But how about when you're like upset? and randomly your best friend calls you, it's like, hey, we're gonna go out to eat. And you get excited and you get rejuvenated. Why? Because you wanna be in that community. You wanna be around that person. Why? Because that is where healing takes place. So when you're in isolation and you start feeling the suffering, start reaching out. Don't do this by yourself. Don't feel like you have to be by yourself in this. So if you guys have your Bibles, if you guys have your phones, if you guys have your iPads or your laptops, I want you guys to go ahead and click or scroll to the left. And I want you guys to go to your Bible apps and go to Proverbs 18, 1 through, 1 through 2. Uh, Proverbs 18, 1 and 2. Um, it's one of my favorite verses in the Bible or in the book of Proverbs because it talks about 
isolation. It talks about what we need and what comes from isolation. And so we're going to jump right in. In Proverbs 18:1, it says, whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Now, I don't know about you, but have you ever met that person that for whatever reason, they just love to debate. They just always have a reason to argue. They have all they, are, they, they always have to be right. It can be 10 people against this one person saying that they're wrong, but for whatever reason, they will justify their rightness, if that's even a word, but they will justify why they are right. They will justify their thoughts and their opinions. And you're just like, why can't you just sit there and listen? This is one of my first points that I want to get you is isolation connected to opinion will always build pride. I'm going to say it one more time. Isolation connected to opinion will always build pride. And just so you guys understand what I'm talking about, it says whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. When you're seeking your own desire, that is a prideful, arrogant nature. One of my mentors, he has this saying, he says, egos is an acronym for edging out God. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, and I was like, yeah. Like, when you get to a place, you can say, hey, I am not doing what I'm supposed to. I'm not loving people like I'm supposed to. I'm not enduring with my brothers like I'm supposed to because I'm too busy being in isolation. Like sometimes that person who's always right are nine times out of 10, they're by themselves way entirely too much. They only hear their voice. They only hear their opinion. They only hear what they think. So their opinion is what matters. Me and my wife have this saying, it's when we have a, what we call heated fellowship or what you guys call an argument, what we say is, is this, we say, I, I respect your feelings. I honor your opinion, but if it does not match with our principles, which is the word of God, we have to put our opinion and our feelings to the side and stand on the principles that we stand on. And the next thing that we say is at the ending of our opinion, the ending of our feelings is nothing. But at the ending of every principle is a promise. When you talk to, when you look at Genesis, in Genesis it talks about it is not good for man to be alone. He made he made everything else good until he said it is not good for man to be alone. Why would he say that? Because he knew that he needed the woman to help expound and give birth to certain visions and dreams that he needed to accomplish. When you look at when uh, when Noah and the ark. When he said, okay, when you see this rainbow, that's a principle. I will no longer, flood, I will not flood the earth ever again. That's a principle. That's a promise. When he talked to Moses, when he talked to Jonah, when he talked to Jesus, when he talked to Peter, when he talked to John, whenever he, like God or whenever the, the word was ever spoken to somebody, there was a principle that came that followed up with the promise. So what are the principles that we stand on, which is the word of God? Him saying, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Leave you, leave is physical. Forsake is emotion. He's saying, I will never leave you physically and I will never leave you emotionally, spiritually. I will always be there for you. And so when we, when we take that time to just say, you know what? Like God, I'm isolating myself. Why am I so isolated right now? I, know, I don't need to be isolated, so God, help me through this process. So if you guys can go to Proverbs 17, 17. So let's all swirl. Like if you got your iPad, a good majority have iPads or your phone or whatever, that you, your device. Let's just go ahead and swipe together. One, two, three, swipe. All right, cool. Well, we should all be there at the same time, right? So Proverbs 17, 17 says this. A friend loves at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. I love that. A brother is born for adversity. See, a lot of times we say, well, 
this is if, if had it said it was you were born from adversity then what the, the problem with being born from something means that that's what you are for you're you are for the adversity you are you're from the adversity which means that like that's all you are for right and so when we look at having our relationships that we are building is the relationship only because we are against the same thing or are we for the same goal, which is to love Jesus, which is to worship our Father, which is to be in our word. And that is where it says for adversity. I need friends that are for the adverse that they're saying like, listen, you're in this, but I'm for you. And I'm here to help you defeat the adversity that is coming against you. My second point is this. Friends love, friends love you, family push you. So you have friends. Friends will they they love you no matter what. They are there they are there for thick and thin, but they may not challenge you. Sometimes you have those friends, they just they're great cheerleaders. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm one of the greatest cheerleading friends that you'll probably ever have. I will root for you no matter what. Like, yo, I got you, baby. I got you. But if you allow me to be close enough, I will also challenge you. This is the thing. But families are in your business. Have you ever had like you? Does anybody have that family member and always want to know all your business? I'm like, why are you always asking? I just, I don't want to tell you all my business. But the reason why they're asking is so they can hold you accountable. Like, remember you said you wanted to get in shape? Remember you said you wanted to write that book? Well, I'm only 16. Who said that there was an age limit to write a book? Who said that there was an age limit to start a website? Who said that there was an age limit to start your own website on, for a business? Like there is no limit to that. So when you have someone that's in your business, they hold you accountable and they push you to your purpose. Sometimes there's friends, which is nothing wrong, that just say, hey, I just wanna be here to cheer you. But then you have to have that person that grows into a family member. You know that friend is like, that's my brother, that's my sister. Like that friend that holds you accountable. They say, hey, that's not right. Hey, don't talk to your parents like that. Hey, remember your mom and dad said that that's not okay. They're the ones that you want in your life and so for me guys i want you guys to look at the the situations that you're in and say like listen what kind of friendships do i have what is my community that i am close with what are the type of people that i am that, that i allow in my sphere i want you guys to write this one thing down the bible like, like my one of my mentors says this he says the bible grows you people stretch i'm gonna say it again the bible grows you people stretch you see the bible grows you spiritually the bible grows your heart and your mind and your soul but people they will challenge your thought process and say hey show me in scripture where that looks like or what that looks like what like where did you find that from i want to know too so now it helps you now you guys do bible studies together now you guys do life together and you guys are both growing and maybe they say well wait that may be out of context or wait remember you said this we read this together and you're not operating in what the word of god is telling us to do see the bible like it gives us the principles people hold us accountable to the principles that we vote that we voice to them right they, we say, like, hey, I want to do better in school. So that friend says, hey, all right, cool. I'm good in math. So I'm going to help you get through math. You tell your friend, well, I'm great at English. So I'm going to hold you accountable to your English projects. And, and you guys do life together. It's almost like a tango. And you guys are doing this thing. And it just seems like, why are we both succeeding? Because we have the common goal. Which is to be successful and everything that our hand that our hand gets put to, we do it all for the glory of God. And that's such an incredible and amazing feeling to have. Is to have somebody there with you, willing to do life with you and say, listen, I'm not gonna just be your greatest cheerleader, but I'm also gonna be your greatest accountability and we're gonna grow together. So this is the final thing, guys. I want you guys to go to Galatians 6 or just you can write it down. Galatians 6, 2 says this, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. There's no greater a testament to us, to, to people who are not lovers of Jesus, than to do what Jesus did, which is to bear the burden that most people should, that they deserve. 
But we come next to them and we say, hey, I'm going to sacrifice my feelings and my emotions to walk side by side with you. My final point is this. You should have people who want to grow through the go through with you. I'm going to say that again. That's good. I, I, that preached to myself. I'm going to say it again. You want people who want to grow through the go through with you. See, this is the thing. When you have people who want to go through things and go through life with you, and they want to grow in the process with you, they don't want to rush the process. They want to trust the process with you because they understand that only you and me together can build a great picture of what the body of Christ is supposed to look like. So I have this Lego here, right? If you love Legos, like me and my son do, it's something about like you see one Lego, you're like, oh, that's cool. But it's different when you say, okay, this is one Lego, but it only stands out by itself. But I don't want just one Lego. I can't do anything with one Lego. It's not until you bring the whole box in, right? And you pour everything out. And as you pour everything out, it builds an amazing picture of what we say we are supposed to look like. And when we are in unison to the body of Christ, when we're in unison, we can build such an amazing picture and a depiction of what Jesus said the body of Christ is supposed to look like because we can build together and we can construct things together like the toe needs the ankle the the ankle needs the foot the 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 the, the, the fingers need the hands the hands need everything is needed for the body to make it something beautiful so to be in isolation what happens when you're in isolation you bleed in silence but when you do what the book of James says, when you confess your sins amongst the brethren, which means like when I confess my, my sins to my friends, healing takes place in that. Healing transforms me and I can now say that I can walk out. We always talk about God who is our provider, God who is our father, God who is our savior. He is all of those things, but he's also our healer. And he wants to heal your heart today. And he wants to say, listen, do not be afraid to reach out to your pastors. Do not be afraid to reach out to your friends. Do not be afraid to say, listen, I am hurting and I need help. So guys, I pray you guys were encouraged for this sermon. This, this sermon as I was putting together, it encouraged me. And I'm grateful for the circle of friends that I have. And I challenge you, get a strong circle of friends that are gonna hold you accountable. We're gonna pray with you, pray over you, go through the word with you and say, listen, we're gonna do life together. So I pray you guys are encouraged today. And just remember and know this, guys. You are loved, you are needed, and you are wanted. Have an amazing day. I'm excited to hear the rest of the dynamic speakers that Pastor RJ has lined up. Have an amazing day, guys. Peace. Thank you so much, Jeff, for that amazing message, teaching us the difference between isolation and community. It's so important to know that you were created for community. And I can't tell you how many times this became true for me as I started growing in my faith. And it's so true that isolation, like you can suffer in that because you, you bleed in silence, like you're by yourself. You have no one to turn to, no one to talk to, nobody to help you. But if you're in community, you can heal, you can find healing. You have people that are there for you and to support you and to help walk you through things and unpack things and to pray over you. And so it's very true that you can suffer in isolation, but heal in community. And that's why God wants you to be a part of His church. It tells us in Ephesians 3 that God has a plan from the very beginning to bring everyone together in the church, the people of God, that there is a family that you belong to. It's a spiritual family and you need that community. But so many of us are caught up in the I generation, right? We have our iPhones and our iPads and a lot of technology and a lot of things you can do that you couldn't do 25 years ago. And it has isolated us, right? See what I did there? See, we can do a lot of things without other people now. You can just push an app. All you have to do is just click on a link and everything's done. You can order everything online and bring it to you. You don't even have to leave your house anymore as we've learned throughout this quarantine time that everything can be done mobily. And yet we're still longing for community. After about four weeks, that fifth week starts to hit and you start to get a little stirred crazy because you were created to know other people. And so you need to know these few facts as we wrap up the exalted student experience. The first thing you need to know is that you need to let people into your life. Stop pushing people away, let people in. You need to invite people into your life who are going to encourage you, they are going to challenge you, they are going to support you, that are going to love you, who are going to be your friend. 
See, the Bible says a lot about friendship and it says that a true friend loves at all times, loves like a brother, supports you like a brother, like family. And so as we move forward, we need to let people into our lives. The other fact that you need to know is that Jesus will never leave you alone because Jesus promises companionship. Yes, Jesus promises companionship. No matter what you're going through right now, you truly aren't alone, even if you feel alone, because Jesus is right there with you. He never leaves you nor forsakes you as a Christian. That's what's so incredible. But see, when we gather, Jesus tells us when two or three are gathered together and you're going through things, He is in the midst. He is present because of your unity and the bond that you have together. That's why we need church. That's why we need community. That's why we need to have a spiritual connection with one another. We can't do Christianity by ourselves. There is no solo Christianity. God is not a solo God either. He's a trinity. And there's community between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God, yes. But at the same time, they're all in fellowship and, and they all have unity with one another. And that's what we need to have in the church. And that's what we need to have with one another. And that's what we need to have with our family. And that's what we need to have with our friends. And so we need to take this message to heart that Jesus promises companionship. But the other part of that is that people give you discipleship. So Jesus gives you companionship, but people give you discipleship. See, it's life on life. You have to have others in your life that teach you and show you the way, that help you to understand the truth, that point you in the right direction, that show you where you made a mistake, who give you grace and mercy so you can get stronger and better. And the places where you can find that is at church. And the places that you can discover that is in your youth group. That's why teenagers need the church more than ever before. Because so many are isolated because of social media and technology and just the way that this world operates. Everyone just kind of goes to their own corner. Everyone just goes to their own way. They don't want anyone speaking into their life or telling them how to do something. And so now you have this tension. And yet God's just like, you need other people. Don't be lonely. It's a choice. Get involved. Get plugged in. Be a part of what God is calling you to do. Be a part of what your youth group is doing and watch your friendships grow. Watch how you went from being alone to being known. And that's what God desires for you as a teenager. And so as we wrap up the Exalted Student Experience, I want you to know how much God loves you, that God is real, that God is truth, and that God wants a relationship with you. And if you seek Him out, if you call on the name of Jesus, and you ask Him to be Lord of your life, that you believe He died on the cross for your sin and He rose again from the grave victoriously to give you eternal life, that relationship that you have with Him will set you up for an amazing life of adventure because He has a plan for you. And one of the greatest mistakes many people make is that they reject that plan in their youth and they find out later when they're an adult that they missed out on so much that God had for them. And they live a life full of regret and pain and mistakes and jealousy because they missed out and they look back and they wish that they made this decision when they could. And so today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to change and say yes to God, yes to Jesus, yes to the gospel, yes to church, and to make it a part of your life as a teenager. God bless you guys. And we're so grateful that you've been tuning in and we ask that you drop a comment and let us know if you've been ministered to by these videos and that God has been speaking to you. We want to hear what God has been sharing and speaking to your heart about. God bless.